Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, we got another meatloaf going here, uh, number 41, and uh, got a few things going. <clears throat> got some viewer appreciation stuff that's actually uh, um, pretty cool. Um, a guy uh, in Oregon contributed to uh, the Autometric uh, Restoration Project, and we'll take a look at that. Um, and uh, that's kind of triggered a couple of other things uh, that I'll show you guys over there. Um, you, you guys are pretty good with these mystery tools, I have to say. Uh, uh, the last one uh, that I showed, uh, you get about 20 guys got it in about two minutes uh, <laughs> after the video went up. So uh, I think I got something a little harder this time we'll take a look at. Um, then I got some, um, some broken tools that I'm going to show you guys. And, um, uh, some of you know that, uh, that I used to run a job shop many years ago. Well, not many years ago, but uh, a few years ago. And um, so in the course of our operations, uh, yeah, you lose a few tools here and there. So uh, anyway, I uh, ran across a box the other day where uh, I had been saving some of these things. And uh, um, so we're going to drag those out and we'll, <laughs> we'll take a look at some, uh, uh, some uh, horror stories, uh, tool horror stories there. So... Um, and then, uh, let's see, what else we got? I don't know, uh, probably got something else in there. Um, and uh, so let's, uh, let's pop over to the other table and uh, I'll set the camera up and we'll, uh, we'll look at some tools. Okay, so um, this first one here is um, uh, from Jason Lyle. And uh, he has a company up in, um, or excuse me, he works for a company called Lane Manufacturing up in, up in or uh, Lebanon, Oregon. It's kind of heavy. He sent me a uh, Dorian tool post. So he he heard <clears throat> excuse me he heard me talking about uh, uh, the Automatic jig bore project and how I was getting ready to buy a tool post. And anyway, he had this. I guess it was sitting around in a drawer. And um, um, now I've cleaned it up a bit. It was it was all frozen up and uh, kind of inoperable when I got it from him, but uh, I was able to uh, uh, to free free it up and uh, and get it operational again. Now this is an interesting one here in that it doesn't have a it doesn't have a lever. You actually rotate these um, hexes here, and it pushes out this uh, this key to lock the tool uh, block in. So it's kind of, I think these were designed for uh, CNC lays where uh, guys were mounting these in there to do quick change uh, tools in a CNC lathe. So these were kind of low profile was the idea. Um, you don't see these too much anymore because most people just, you know, there's different kinds of tool blocks that you can get. But he, uh, um, another viewer, uh, Charles Marlin had sent me this. Uh, he had an extra holder that didn't fit his uh, um, his tool post, so he sent it along to me. And I said, "Oh, well, gee, I got an extra an extra tool post or a tool block now. Maybe I'll get that particular size when I buy the one for the Autometric." Well, anyway, he uh, took pity on me and uh, sent me this one here, which is great, and uh, it is the it is the correct size there. And then I don't have an Allen wrench handy or, uh, or I torque that down. But so now I got a post and at least one holder. And uh, it also turns out that uh, um, this is the same size as my spring tool holder. So uh, that fits that. Okay, and you guys have seen this one here. I've kind of showed that one a little bit. And uh, the other one that it fits that you haven't seen here, let me slide this over just a little, is my grinding attachment here. Now this is a uh, this is a high speed grinding attachment that uh, my tool maker friend Charlie made for me a long time ago and I made a, a block for it so that it mounts, guess what, in a tool post like this. Look at that. That one fits kind of snug, okay, which is good. And then um, you can drive this with a uh, uh, a router. So that's what I was driving this with is a um, uh, a variable speed router and a small V-belt pulley. So I had the router mounted on a, uh, on, a bra on a bracket, and then you can put stones in here. And this is a little a little ER collet set up here that you can uh, um, you know put different uh, different stuff in. Let me pull that out of there. 
this one fits pretty pretty snug. Anyway, so we'll be seeing that. So that's going to be a grinding attachment maybe for that autometric. So uh, um, anyway, Jason, think. Did I drop this? Um, Jason, thank you very much for uh, the tool post. We're going to put it to good use. I've already put a little bit of work into it to get it operational. I got to order some new O-rings for the um, uh, for these eccentrics, and uh, and then it's it's pretty happy again, and that'll go right on the uh, great, right on the autometric. So thank you very much for that. And I got one more thing to show from uh, that's from Jason. Okay, so the other thing that uh, that Jason sent me was. He sent me a, a variety of these, uh, these, these rubber bungees, and this happens to be the shortest one. And it fits in my, uh, my virtual frame here. Um, and uh, anyway, he sent me a bunch of these uh, different lengths all the way up to ones that will go six feet. And, um, and so uh, this Lane Manufacturing, they, uh, they do plastic and rubber molding uh, stuff, although I don't think they made these. Um, they make some stuff similar to this or they wholesale these or something like that. Anyway, uh, um, these are nice for keeping uh, tarps kind of snugged up and, uh, and taut uh, when you're driving down the road. So, uh, so guys, always remember, tie your shit down or, or tie your stuff down in your truck when, you, uh, when you're moving stuff because, uh, man, uh, that's one of my pet peeves is uh, people that don't tie their, uh, tie their loads down uh, when they're moving them on the highway. So. Anyway, Jason, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate that, and we'll put those to good use. Okay, so you guys guessed this in about two minutes here, so uh, I'm going to say that that was a failure as a uh, as a mystery tool. Um, this is what's called a bar coin coin, and it's spelled a Q U O I N, and it's made for fitting in a. Um, um, when you do typesetting, you have a kind of a frame that the that the text fits into, and then you you want to push it up and and uh, get it nice and tight uh, to fit in the um, um, and, and I don't know what they call the uh, the frame that it fits it in the box or the letter box or whatever it is. And anyway, so this is an expanding device that uh, that wedges that stuff and tightens it up in the uh, in the box. So uh, it's a printing tool. And uh, anyway, you guys guessed that in about five seconds. And um, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you a different type. And this is a this is a different type here. And these are uh, made by Challenge. This one doesn't have a this one doesn't have a name on it, but uh, it could be a Challenge too, I suppose. So this is another kind of coin. Um, and uh, these are kind of like adjustable parallels here. Okay, you see how they work. And then this engages that, so it's kind of like a rack and pinion, right? So that's the rack and then that's the pinion. And then, so this is the, the little tool here and you can actually, you can tap the stuff down too, I guess. And then, uh, um, I'm not quite sure what this end is for, probably tapping also. Um, but I use these in the milling machine, and we're going to pop over to the mill, and I'm going to show you how uh, how I use these in the mill occasionally, and um, um, as a setup tool. So that'll be kind of cool. So we'll go over to the mill, and uh, we'll take a look at uh, how uh, Mr. Wizard uses those on the mill. Okay, so you guys guessed uh, you guessed uh, last week's mystery tool here pretty quickly. So uh, I think I got one that's a little harder this time. So I'm going to show you the tool here, and there's the tool, okay, and um, so it's got a wood handle, uh, metal shank, and then um, um, at the end here, and I don't know how well you guys can see that, it's about, I don't know, three millimeters in diameter, there is a knurled wheel here, and it rotates, and I hope you can see that, it's turning. All right, it has a handle. It's inscribed uh, 100 or 001. No, it's 100. Um, so it's got a little knurled wheel on it. And hard for me to see. It might have a little screw in the end that holds the whole mess on there. So anyway, if you know what that is, uh, throw it up in the comments. So that's this week's mystery tool. So, so it's for... Uh, it's for doing your fingernails, right? <laughs> All 
right, so this next one here, this is from uh, James Green, uh, also known as uh, Walter White, and he's in um, uh, New Mexico, uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And anyway, he sent me a little, uh, a little care package of carbide inserts and uh, some uh, uh, root beer, uh, root beer candy. So uh, he's contributing to the. Uh, uh, the, uh, the delinquency of a fat boy. So uh, anyway, James, thanks for the uh, root beer candies. We'll, uh, we'll try to give some of those away for guests coming over. But let's take a look at some of these, uh, these carbide inserts here. There's some interesting stuff in here. So there's one I can use right away there. That's a uh, little Iskar, that's uh, um, an Iskar grooving insert or a parting insert. Yeah, it looks, it's a neutral rake. I think it's the size that I use too, so uh, that's a good one there. Uh, a little Kaiser thin bit. I don't have a Kaiser set, but uh, um, maybe I'll get one. Um, so that's a good one. There's a big fat CNMG. Uh, that's uh, one of Adam's favorite uh, inserts, although that's a big one there. That looks like a half inch IC there, or maybe 5 eighths IC. We got a couple of those. Um, Little square one. Uh, some you see these in uh, milling tools, uh, the square ones, and some lathe tools you see square ones. Um, so this is a uh, this is a grooving tool here, okay, and um, it's you can probably mount it uh, a couple of different ways on uh, different holders, but uh, so you just index it this way uh, to a fresh uh, fresh edge there. So this is the top of the tool here. And it's relieved underneath, and it's relieved towards the back. You know, it's about I don't know, about a sixteenth wide uh, grooving tool. Okay, another one, the same. A uh, little triangle here. Um, it's a uh, positive insert here. So a little triangle with a, uh, a very light chip breaker there, uh, although a very small corner radius on those. Um, yeah, pretty small. Okay. Um, this is a uh, fits in the same holder as this, and uh, this is a full radius here, probably for some kind of profiling uh, operation, would be my guess. Okay, so this looks like uh, this is a threading tool, and it looks like an Acme thread to me. Uh, just looking at it, a pretty fine Acme thread, a uh, maybe a ten or a, uh, maybe even smaller than that, you know. Um, um, yeah, it looks like Acme threading tool. Fits the same holder. Might have to get a little holder for that then because he sent me quite a few of those. There's another one. Looks like Acme threading. So that's, this is uncoated and this is coated here. Um, yeah. All right, let's see. Another one. Okay, this is just regular threading here. Uh, 60 degree threading, metric or, uh, uh, or inch. Okay, oops. Uh, a couple more, another profiling one. What else? Looks like another Acme. What else we got? We got these. These are some kind of grippers here. So these look like jaws for uh, uh, a vise, or uh, they're kind of serrated like, uh, like they're gripper jaws. And um, so, I don't know, pipe, maybe some kind of pipe uh, clamping thing or something like that. Oh, there's one that's got the. Got the rubber off of it. Oh no, okay. So this is steel, oh okay, I, I misread that there. So this is steel with serrations and then it has a, a carbide uh, uh, cutting tool brazed into it. So this is some kind of big scary grooving tool or something um, uh, that looks like you can um, index it uh, a little bit uh, on these notches perhaps. Uh, or else that's a registration feature to keep it from uh, moving around in the holder. So, kind of neat. A big VN, uh, VNMG here, okay. Uh, you know, you can use these for profiling. Uh, a couple of those. Another triangle guy. More squares, squares. Oh yeah, here's some more groove. Oh, these will come in handy, those little groovers there. Okay, another... Uh, C style insert. Uh, these are just uh, oh, so these are Kenna metal KC850. 
Those are Kenna metal. That's a great carbide grade. Triangle. I don't know, kind of an interesting uh, eclectic selection of, uh, of inserts there. So, uh, um, kind of cool. Anyway, James, thank you very much for that. Uh, some of these I'll be able to use. And then uh, some of these, uh, these are intriguing here. I may uh, see if I can uh, scrape up a, uh, um, a proper holder for those. Anyway, thank you very much. It's a nice little uh, lot of carbide there. So, uh, uh, appreciate it. Okay, so um, this next one here, I thought I'd show some uh, some uh, some jacked up tools uh, just for fun. Um, let's start with this. So this is what happens. Um, this is what happens. This is a polycarbonate, by the way, so otherwise known as Lexan, and um, this is what happens when you have a brand new rota brooch and you go to cut a, uh, a two inch hole or whatever that is. Um, yeah, two inch hole. You go to cut a two inch hole in that and you, uh, you touch in a little bit too hard. So it immediately grabs and kind of self feeds and, uh, and these, these chips are very thick so it, it probably plucked this out of the mill. In fact, I probably guarantee that because it's got a little angle on it so uh, uh, so somebody got really surprised. So the, the, the shop that I used to manage, um, you know, the guys would come up and go, oh, hey, I busted a tool, I need to get another one or whatever. So, you know, I had to get them a new tool or uh, suggest something else or whatever. Most of the time we just got a new one if uh, the last one we had. But anyway, I got some, uh, some other ones to show you that are from that same, uh, that same lot. So here's a, uh, this is an inserted, um, uh, end mill here and it's about three-quarter diameter and you can see the oops, uh, screw pop little remnants of a screw you can see part of an insert right there well this I don't know what happened uh, I don't know what the story is on this but uh, they said hey boss need a new one so I had to get him a new one this is a Mitsubishi here and you know that's probably a two hundred dollar tool there is my guess I don't know and it looks like we modified it slightly here for some reason um, this the oh maybe we gave it a look that's what we did so this is stock here we just relieved it up a little farther because we probably had to reach a little a little farther than it normally would so uh, anyway that one got kind of smoked down I saved these just because they're kind of uh, they're kind of reminders of uh, you know what not to do and be careful and all that. So I used to have them in the display case, and uh, but I uh, I kind of took them with me when I left. So <laughs> so let's see. Here's another one. This is a good one here. So this is a spotting drill here. This is a real nice uh, uh, spotting drill, or it was. And you know you could probably sharpen that back, you know, but it's it's a lot funner to look at this way. So somebody encountered some uh, hard material and they were going too fast and basically just heated the drill till it softened and then uh, tried to shove it through a hole. Um, so that's a goner there. You know, that's a $25 tool probably, something like that. So that's probably $200 for that maybe, $25. Um, all right, next one. Let me uh, put this together off camera here so you guys can appreciate it. <laughs> see or if I can get it. Come on. There it goes. So, you know, we've been talking about rota brooches, right? And uh, so here's a rota brooch here, and you can probably already see what's going to happen. So this is a little one inch, and this one, uh, this one blew up. It, it wasn't this one, but it was something like that. It, it grabbed and, uh, and then uh, self-destructed. You know, so those are I don't know what a what a one inch is. They're probably sixty bucks, something like that. But that's a <laughs> kind of a, a grenado there. Kind of cool. All right. So next one here. So here's what happens when you when you turn the coolant off for a second and then forget to turn it back on. So this is a a YG roughing end mill and a fine pitch rougher. And they were doing aluminum with this, and um, this was on the CNC, I think. And uh, I think they took the, or they turned the coolant off to, 
I don't quite remember the story now. They turned the coolant off for a second because it was it was splashing or something and they wanted to move the nozzle or I don't remember what, but they forgot to turn it back on. And um, um, so the chips packed in there and they loaded up and then all hell broke loose. Now this one here, I could probably pry that stuff out of there and retrieve the tool. But once again, it's more of a kind of a... a <laughs> Fun as a uh, as a learning uh, you know a reminder of things not to do there. So okay, so the last one here. In fact, this is uh, this is chopped off here. This was a part that we were doing in the in the CNC lathe here, and this is uh, this is titanium here. This is uh, commercially pure titanium. Okay, and uh, we used to do a lot of this uh, for um, corrosion resistant stuff. Anyway, you can see there's something stuck in there, and it's it's pretty much welded in there and it blew up that was a solid carbide boring bar that's that's buried down in there and bumped into something or chips packed in there you can see the boring bar is very close to the diameter of the finish diameter so my guess is there was some chip packing or something in there and it just kind of got stuck and then pew, welded that off so they had to pull the piece out saw it off and then uh, then start up again and uh, and go so that's a that's about a $300 boring bar there. So uh, if you guys are thinking about getting in the machine shop business, here, here's what you will face uh, with employees, right? And, you know, not all employees are breaking tools, but this is, this is the reality of, the, uh, uh, of that type of work is uh, you're doing, of job shop work, you're doing stuff and you're breaking tools and you're wearing them out, right? So right here, this is just a small smattering here, you know, and that's a, uh, yeah, that's a thousand bucks worth of tools. That's two hundred, five hundred. Nah, it's not a thousand bucks a tool. Yeah, it's six hundred dollars worth of tool or something like that. So uh, anyway, uh, um, that's the life of a job shop right there. And uh, you know, a lot of the other stuff that uh, was blown up or broken got thrown away. I just happened to save these because they were uh, uh, good examples of what not to do. Anyway, hope you like that. Okay, so. We're talking about these coins, um, and um, so I, I occasionally use these in the mill here. And sometimes you need a uh, uh, kind of a backstop that fits in the uh, in the T-slot groove. So normally, normally I use uh, uh, you know I got some dowel pins that kind of fit in here like this, right? And then you can you can uh, take something like this and push them up against there and it gets it parallel, right? Well, a lot of times you don't want these sticking up or uh, you want something uh, um, that's got a little more contact area than that for whatever reason. So that's where these come in. And you can put these in your T-slot groove like so. All right. And then using the, uh, the rack and pinion thing, you can, you, can lock those, you can lock those in there, right? And what's nice about this is that you can set the height too, so you can set it, uh, say, below the uh, the surface of that, for example, right? And um, the other thing you can do with it too, and let me go grab another one, and uh, I'll show you what you can do. You can actually use them as a clamp too. So let me show that. All right, so there's a second one here. Um, and uh, so what you can do is uh, you can put something in like this, right? And we're up against that one, and we'll expand this just a little bit so it's hanging over that edge. And then we can put this in like so, all right? And then we can actually lock that. We can lock that in there, okay? And then cap it down a little bit. So now we could actually hold on to that and, uh, and take a cut off of that whole surface. So that's just another way that you can use those. Uh, although I don't generally use these like that, I use them more like, um, more like backstops. And then you can just pop them out. So I would probably use them more like this uh, in real life um, on the mill anyway. Okay, oops, I didn't put that one in very good. but. You get the idea anyway. So you got a nice long surface to, uh, to butt up against uh, with a plate or something like that. So anyway, that's another use for the little uh, uh, letterbox coins. And um, so if you see those at the flea market, you, uh, you know what those are. And
And uh, I have some smaller ones, but I've lost track of them. Uh, I don't know where they are right now, so uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll keep looking for them. Anyway, thanks for watching.